Hello there and welcome. My name is Jimmy Wigman, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Atlassian cloud changes that happened between February 26 and March 4th. So let's jump into the article, uh, or rather their blog, and to see what kind of changes they have pushed out for us. So here we are now in the Atlassian blog, where we have now the Atlassian cloud changes, February 26th to March 4, 2024. And we're going to do like we always do. We're going to jump through them one by one and see what's new this week. And then we're going to talk about it to see what kind of madness are they uh, delivering for us this week. So let's start with this one. So let's not jump past this one. Let's going to see so then they don't want to behave sometimes. There we go. Now we're on the right one. So enhanced security for webhooks. So what they have done now is that they have done an important security update for webhooks. So now what we can do is uh, we can add a new secret field. Uh, so what that one means then is that we can use this one in the header. Uh, so this one, let's read what they say here now. This enhancement applies to webhook created through the Jira administration or via the REST API. So in both of them, you will now have the availability to add a secret field. And when you have added this one, and uh, then it's utilized by generating an HMAC, uh, so an hash-based message authentication code. And this one will then allow us to have basically an extra layer of protection. So this one means that when you include them in the request header, then uh, this one will add that extra layer of protection. So we the recipient needs to actually uh, acknowledge this one with the correct hack uh, HMAC there. So this one is very good. And also, if you want to read more about it, you can check out their secure uh, admin webhook section so you can read more about what it is. But this one is really good. Uh, I can assume that a few of the uh, webhooks that we currently have, the recipient uh, or the receiving end might want um, or might need to actually update their uh, integration with the webhook. But other than that, a very good start on this week's uh, updates. So let's see, next up we have a health check for application tunnels. So for every application tunnel that we have between, for example, different Atlassian products, and uh, we can now do a health check for it. And this one is, if I read it correctly, it is two ways that it will actually do it. So one is automatically. Uh, so uh, you will see them in the uh, admin section here. If you go to adminatlassic.com and under settings and application links, then you can see then the connection status for each tunnel. Uh, so this one is automatic, uh, if I read it correctly. But you can also refresh them at any time. So if you suspect that something has happened, then you can click on this one and you will have uh, a new check being done manually. And apparently they are adding new statuses uh, based on these new health checks then for application tunnels. And so they will now better describe the problems that you can encounter. So new statuses uh, for this check, and but they don't include which ones, of course. So I guess we have to figure it out ourselves and see if we can break something and see what, what statuses they will end up with. But overall, this is a really, really good change also. Now an extra check for our application tunnels, making sure that they are operating, uh, operational and that they are working the way it should. In the Jira platform itself, uh, we now have the same thing, enhanced security for webhooks. It's exactly the same, but they did not add all the, the links here, uh, so they know where it is. But uh, it's basically the same thing, and it's for the entire Jira platform. And the team field uh, in your issues. So when you assign, for example, a team or when you add a team to uh, an issue, uh, it used to have the singular person icon. So that boring um, with a little figure in it. And the way they do it now is they will instead fetch the team icon. Uh, so that the one that you set now on your Teams page. And this one will make it much easier then to identify what team are we actually adding there. This is especially important if you have many teams that have similar names. So the icon themselves can actually differentiate between them. So this is also a very good change. Inline edit to rename dashboard gadgets. Not the biggest change I've ever seen, but I'm guessing this is more like getting it in line with how we edit other areas. 
so basically what is happening is uh, when you uh, go into edit mode and you want to change the name of one of your gadgets before you had to click on the more action here and then go to rename uh, to rename it and uh, so what you can do now instead then is just clicking on the name and then you can select the title of the gadget uh, and just change it so it's more like what you have in issues and other areas you can just click on what you want to edit so not the biggest change um, and i don't know how often we need to to do this but i'm guessing it is more of an architectural change to make sure it's more in line with how it is in other areas so i give this a thumbs up anyway Visual update to la label validation messages. Uh, so this one is also a small UI change. Uh, so they have updated appearance now when you add a label or you remove a label or you edit a label uh, when you get the validation saying that it has been done. And this one now appear in a raised box above the label inputs. I'm not really sure what they mean by a raised box uh, because it's not a, a modal uh, or a pop-up as some people call it. Um, but the race box, I'm assuming this is more like a tooltip kind of vis um, visualization. And so I don't know if this one is done because they want to be um, more in line with uh, Y or VCAG uh, for disabled people or for people with uh, reduced eyesight, for example. Uh, or if this one has an impact on text readers or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's there. Uh, I don't think it's bad or good uh, it's just nice filter issues by organization that is a really uh, welcome change uh, so what this one means is when you go to search for uh, tickets or for issues and when you go to the filters and you want to create filters uh, what you do then is uh, in the more section where you can fetch more fields to actually use in your query and now they have added so you can have organization there. So that means that you can now filter out tickets, for example, based on a customer's organization. And so this one is really good. And so uh, a welcome change, and it will make it easier also for people who are not very familiar just using jQL, but want to use the UI uh, to actually filter things out. So this is also a very good change. And we are Taking a little bit about assets now then. So view and add apps to roles within assets. So what they have done now is they extended basically the, the permissions. Uh, so now we will have a specific permissioned column, I guess it will be, uh, where they have the ability then to uh, manage the access for different applications. So different applications will have different uh, roles um, within your assets. So that is really good. And it also, it could be good to know also here then, if you have, let me just make sure I mark on the correct screen here. Uh, so if you have a data import, uh, then the apps involved will automatically be added, which makes sense. Otherwise the, uh, the import will probably fail because you need to have manage, management access for it or manager access for it. Uh, but you can remove it afterwards, for example, or if you are missing something, then you can add it also. And finally, on that one, they have also added some extra descriptors. Uh, so you have a little bit more information on how things work and why they are there. Uh, so this one is uh, now going to roll out. So you have it in assets then. So when you go into uh, your object schema and you want to see, uh, or you want to set different roles, different permissions, then you will see these new uh, functionalities that you can have. So I just wish that they would take this one an extra step so you can actually extend uh, permissions all the way down to the individual objects. And um, because I, right now you can close the whole schema and you can then allow people to fetch or, or manipulate different things in uh, one object type. Uh, but within the object type, you cannot today uh, set so an individual uh, object can be edited by a certain individual or a certain group and this means that you either have to unlock everything in that object type which is probably not something that you want to do uh, or you need to be very creative and nest groups and stuff like that and it's not very good 
So I would really like to see that one. But for now, at least we have for apps. So they extend it to apps so we can control access from apps. Next up is the duplication also for health checks for application tunnels. We already talked about that one, so we're not going to do it again. And it's already uh, been discussed above. Let's jump to the next one. Next up is your software. And the first thing out there is to link issues to connect work across team and projects in Jira. Uh, so what they are doing here is that they add a functionality now to uh, link issues uh, directly in your board. And uh, so before you had to either go into the issue itself and then you need to create the link, click on the link uh, functionality and then you would link it to a specific other ticket or issue. And uh, so what they're doing now is they are moving this one closer than to the board itself. Uh, so now you can either right click on an issue uh, or you can click on the three dots there for the more actions. And then you will get uh, the modal and then it will allow you then to connect this one and, and you can set a link type also. What kind of link do you want to set between these two? And if you don't have one, if you want to link this one to a ticket, but you haven't created it yet, then it will actually allow you to create uh, a ticket directly from there. So directly from your board, now you can create a link ticket to another product. Uh, or within your own product, uh, and it will automatically now be created and it will be automatically linked. And the second thing that they have done is in the view settings up in the right corner now, you can toggle this one on and off. So if you toggle it on, then you will actually show an indicator if there are one or more tickets linked to that particular uh, issue in your board. So this one I actually have. So I think that let's jump over to uh, my Jira instance and I can show you how this one works. So here we are now in my test instance and I am now into one of the active sprints here. So what I can do then is I can either right click and I can select link issue or I can click on the three dots and click on the link issue. And when I do that, I get this model and the, the first uh, or the, the default view is then that you can then link them. So you can now have a link type, uh, so you can have clones, and then you can select something. Uh, or you can create a linked issue. Uh, so then you will actually have the same functionality as to create linked issue within the issue itself. So you will go into this view, and what I was really happy about, and that I was a little bit concerned about, was that if I select, for example, a JSM project, then you still have this user request fields. Uh, so you can still toggle between having the form fields or the request type fields. So this one is really good. Uh, this one I like that it was still here. Uh, I haven't figured out how to get back. If you do this, I can discard. It seems to be the only one. This seems like a little bit of a bug. And uh, should be a way to get back to this one if I accidentally clicked here. But uh, this is how it works. So now if I create this link, you will see this one will now show up, one link to a software issue. And if you click on it, then you will see what it is. So for those of you who work in plans, for example, this one is probably very familiar to you um, because this is kind of the view that you have uh, when you look at dependencies, for example. And you can even click here and you can add multiple ones if you want to do that. And to toggle this one on if you don't see it or toggle it off if you see it but you don't want to have it, then you have up here in the view settings. So if you click here, then the bottom one will actually allow you to toggle it on. You see it goes away there, but it can toggle it on and then it goes back there. So I think this one is quite a nice change. Uh, I think this one will make it very a little bit faster to create linked issues. And also when you're working with different type of planning activities, so you can actually directly link, uh, create dependencies basically between these. So that's a great change, uh, but now I think let's jump back into the blog and see what else we have. So here we are now again, and this was the uh, item that we just looked at. I'm just going to check. Yeah, the next one, we jump over to your service management. And this one is new for me. I have never seen that they have actually announced a bug fix before. Uh, this one is a bug fix, and I'm not really sure what this one is for. Uh, so it's kind of some kind of setting for customer notification uh, for company managed products. 
that before apparently wasn't saved properly. Uh, not really sure which one they are referring to. Um, but apparently they have fixed it, so that's good. And they have also done an UI change for people that have the free plan of your service management. So they have done a little update to the position where the save button is. So now the save button is at the end of the approval required page uh, instead of under the security settings heading. Just so you know where it is. Moving on with the Confluence. And uh, the, the Confluence team has been on fire this year. They have pushed out tons of great new changes. And the latest one here now is that admins can create automation rules for public links. So what they have done now is that they, you can now do it directly from, uh, from the public link settings on a page. Uh, so that one is a little bit different. So when an uh, admin or a Confluence space, uh, when an admin on a Confluence space with automation turns a page public link, when they turn it on or off, they will see then a little prompt that says that you can now uh, create automation also uh, related to public links. I don't use public links, uh, so I don't really know what the use case for this one would be. I'm really curious to see what kind of uh, automations would you set up for this one, for the public links, uh, so I can learn a little bit what, uh, what this one can be used for. So please sign off in the comments and let me know what you think this one can be used for. Overall, though, good change. More Confluence goodies. Uh, we talked, I think it was last week or the week before, we talked about uh, that they added more uh, nesting. Uh, and with nesting, what they mean by that one is that you can basically put macros within macros. And now they are taking this one even further, uh, so even more uh, that you can use. So panels here, for example, you can now have media, code blocks, action dividers, and decisions can all live within the panels macro. And also for nested expands, uh, you can now have lists and code blocks, actions, quotes, horizontal rules, decisions, and notes. So a lot more nesting that you can do now with uh, the macros. And this is really good because it has been a little bit annoying that you cannot put things in another macro, but you don't know why. And there's no rhyme or reason for it. It just didn't work. Uh, but now they are uh, really pushing for this one. So more nesting for this one. And I love it. Um, the more you can nest, the more fluid you can make this, the better it is for, for everyone. Next up is the same health checks for application tunnels. We already talked about that one. So let's jump over to the next one. And that was it. That was the last one we had for this week. And it looks like it was only good and positive things. Uh, so that is the way it should be. And I also think that it was a lot more, many small things, but very many good things that came out this week. So overall, I'm happy with the Atlassian Cloud changes from February 26th to March 4th. And I guess the only thing that remains for me to say is that I hope that you will have an awesome day and a great week.